Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of the Sanibel Captiva Guide podcast. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We have Maria Espinosa, who is the executive director of a very popular Sanibel charity called Fish. And why don't you explain a little bit what, what is Fish down for? It is a, a funny name, isn't it? It is a funny name. <laughs> right, you're executive director of Fish. It's my favorite question to right. ask. Her. Uh, right, to answer. Okay, so give us the, the rundown of what Fish is. So Fish is a wraparound social service agency, but people often ask what it stands for. So each letter represents one of our four major programs. Food programs, island-based education, senior services, and helping hands. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now we all know. Now we all know. So <laughs> September 28th, we were um, the storm happened, Hurricane Ian, and you guys were pivotal after the storm in helping uh, the islands. Somewhat, well, we're still not back to normal, so I won't say get back to normal, but you, we saw you guys out there. We were out there in a capacity of the week after the storm. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since the storm or what you did right after and what you've, what you'd, how your role has progressed today. I guess it's important to say that even before the storm, we have an active hurricane program where we try to identify the most vulnerable individuals and get them prepared for the storm. Oh, I actually didn't realize that you do yeah. that. Okay. That has been going on for 40 years since FISH's inception, since we realized, well, not we, the community that started FISH realized that there were people on the island who had things in their mind that they were prepared for the storm, they'd lived in Florida their entire lives, they had it. Right. And they had their vodka and yeah, <laughs> they knew about they it. thought it was <laughs> yeah. donezo, but we prepare a packet, it's pretty comprehensive and specializes on resources specifically for um, Sandbell Captiva residents. And we prepare that list in collaboration with the city. So given if there's a mandatory evacuation or a voluntary evacuation, we can make sure those people got off safely. Hmm. So people have handicaps or mobility issues and I guess all manner of things. All of the above, okay. for sure. Interesting. Even just not a network to go to after hmm. a storm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we started making those calls, those types of preparations. As the storm got more severe, we had more neighbors calling, hey, I'm concerned about this such person. Can you double check if they're going to be okay, if they have a plan? And that, I think up until Tuesday, we solidified plans for about 75 individuals who really had no place to go, wow. did not have supplies ready. When I'm telling you, they had a bottle of water and that, and that was, was it. their plan. So, Very Floridian. Oh, so much so. And they all <laughs> say the same thing. I've lived through this before. I've got it. Mm -hmm. um, and th that's what they have, all their knowledge against them. Um, yeah. To not really take the storm seriously. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for their concerned neighbors, we would have never been able to identify them. Right. So, Which I, is super uh, important because after the storm, obviously, it was down to the um, services, uh, paramedics, firefighters, helicopters to rescue people. So you alleviated a lot of that, um, more of the stress, I guess, from rescuing the people that you were able to help before the storm. Absolutely. That was our goal to get as many people off island as possible. Gotcha. Yeah. Did you have a question, Mike? Yeah. How many people did you end up helping before the storm even hit? That so our active hurricane list includes about 125 individuals that we help plan again before the storm on tuesday i remember making 75 active plans and getting them into you know action with our staff and i want to say the monday we had about 50 individuals wow. so i don't have a clear clear number right but, you know, <laughs> i'm sure you have so many numbers through your head right so now many. and everything before the storm kind of gets wiped yeah well and everybody was told to leave and there were a lot that didn't and you know like you touched on the on the fact that a lot of people didn't take it too seriously us included um how many near 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 misses have we had in the past you know? yeah well we've been here 23 years 24 years yeah. now and yeah we had hurricane charlie which was pretty bad yeah um, but yeah so a lot of people did stick around a lot more than they thought i think didn't they Absolutely. And I mean, I attended all the hurricane meetings and prep and everything. And even I thought to myself on Wednesday morning, I'm going to head to the island for one last 
run through. Yeah. Um, luckily, I was held back by someone and <laughs> you said, yeah. you are staying. But I'm like, okay, fine. Right. Because our phone line is connected to a few of our devices. And we were still getting calls from people saying, I didn't evacuate. What, what do, do I, I do? do? Unfortunately, these calls happen all throughout Wednesday. So we did get some folks calling and saying, you know, just want to make sure someone knows my situation. And some of those situations, as I'm sure you've already heard, were people on their kind of the last limb of their mm, yeah. um, house and just figuring out water's rushing in. Um, so yeah, that, many, yeah. many stories of that nature. I really yeah. have chills right now because, wow. Yeah, yeah, who would believe it? So after the storm, when did you guys get active uh, helping the community? How, how soon and back were you out there? I was able to go out on the sixth day. Before that, I was, well, myself and some of the staff were helping those who were actually getting airlifted to the shelters, connecting them because, again, our phone line stayed open. So there were people from all over saying, do you know how my mom's doing? Do you know how um, my neighbor's doing? All these kinds of things and just coordinating that effort. Um, We also had people that were displaced and had no way to get back to they were trying to ask us how to get back to the island so i want to say our phone lines were open through wednesday and we were up and running thursday at just wow all sorts of services right but and, and the, on the island on the sixth day sorry i didn't mean to talk but the, the, when when we came out at that point you were then to, um distributing ice and emergency packs and packs from the red cross and what was your impression when you first set foot on Sanibel? Did you land at Bailey Road or, or the end of Dixie Beach? Do you remember where you they? My first landing was on Dixie Beach, um, and then my second was on West Gulf. Okay. And both, I don't really think there's words to describe that. Yeah. I've been coming out to the island for like 23 years, so I have very dear memories of it. And I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I said, okay, there's definitely going to be some red tape across the island for about a year. No one's going to come back. We're just going to have to figure out how to help these people get off and um, into their homes to salvage what they can. Um, so I think six months out, I'm very happy to see where it is now. Yeah. But those first few days it were was, insane. And yeah. you looked around and I said, you know, I have to walk all this distance and there's no supplies out here and I knew people had stayed in their homes and they didn't have those things so I said all right well we have to make sure we get ice water and other critical care out here and that's when we started moving with the state to put in missions that's um, what people forget there's the, a lot of the people didn't there was transportation 90 percent of the cars on the island were flooded I know we had friends Ken Bergner who donated he's, he had one of the few vehicles a jeep that was on the, the island he donated that to the police so that they could get around and there was uh, there was no trans- transportation, so so it's for bicycles. So, so except for bicycles, Billy, yeah. So Billy Kirkland of um, Billy's, bike. Billy's bikes opened up his sh- sheds and said you can use the bikes. But all of a sudden, a mile or two miles in the heat becomes a long way, doesn't it? So I know you had okay. a, 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 a station mid island, then you had had one at the Legion, and then one down at the east end of the island. And each one you had different facilities, am I correct? Yeah, so as you get on the island, you kind of learn more about what the need is. And we had the first station over at the community church because it was a good central location and then put in additional needs because we had people biking there. And like you said, I mean, I saw people on their bikes for so long and taking those long hauls, people Mm -hmm. who really, in my opinion, shouldn't have been on the island. Well, saying that Max is 20 four and max at a 20 a 24 year old male very fit and riding a bike (laughs) maybe (laughs) but what's your what do you remember about riding bikes well not only was it i've said this i probably multiple times on the podcast but not only was it really hot and you were covering great distances there was also not a leaf on any of the trees on the entire island so there was no shade like you were if you were going you were going and you were in the full ba- bearing of the sun. And I think I had like a 30 pound backpack on too. Yeah. And the first day I was out there, I think I was out there biking for seven hours mm-hmm. and it was unbelievable. Right. Amazing. And that wasn't, that wasn't a social or like a pleasurable bike riding. No, he was, was out there, there for fun. He was there for fun. <laughs> was he was out there taking pictures training. for 
yeah. for homeowners that couldn't yeah. be there. Right. But the, so the roads were also pretty... Debris. Oh, yeah, and there, there was, was sand. Or, right. the, the, few tr- the few vehicles that were there, the police and stuff, they... If, as soon as they drove by, there was a dust cloud that went in the air, so you couldn't breathe either. <laughs> right, yeah. And then you think of the age demographic of the people that live on Santa Bell and Captiva, too. They're not mostly 24-year-old uh, young kids that yeah, are exactly. riding. Exactly. So I found it really heartwarming when I saw some people, and they said, well, I'm here for a neighbor, because they were on the younger side and, mm-hmm. you know, getting things done for people, because I could think how are they possibly going to make this trek over yeah. if, again, I'm struggling? <laughs> we, the city, when we were working for the city, we were contracted by the city to record the damage mm-hmm. uh, with our drones. And we had a golf cart one day, thanks to the city. And uh, I drove by somebody that was walking with his son. And I, I saw him a second time that day. And he was still walking. And I was like, I got to help this guy. I, and I stopped and picked him up. I ended up taking him all the way to... Um, um, was it the East TV? Gulf or West, uh, West Gulf, wasn't it? West yeah, Gulf it was out on West Gulf. And he was walking from the causeway. Like, right. He had been walking for an hour the, the second time I saw him. Right. And he wasn't even halfway to where he was going. And I was like, dude, I will take you. I wasn't going anywhere near there. I was like, I'll take you there. You cannot walk on this <laughs> No, way. no. We yeah. came across another guy that had practically looked like he was about to have a heart attack. He yeah. pulled this really inefficient foldable cart and he got about a mile down Dixie Beach and then he was still going two miles yeah fortunately the police and I don't think they were supposed to do it gave him a ride and put the stuff on his hood and they jumped in but yeah they literally went and they said they collected all their special memorabilia and valuables from their house and just loaded in just a duffel bag that big and obviously it was super heavy yeah I yeah. have lots of crazy people stories. Going real Lake Murex. Fast that was where he was going. Oh, I was going to Lake Murex. Yeah. 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 yeah, you think of an island, I guess, in some people's minds, you think, oh, a tiny little island, but it's actually quite big. It's yeah. It's quite big. Yeah. And having to make that track while well, you've already probably left for the boat dock super early That's because true. to get to any of the boat docks, I remember it was an hour at least in the car. Yeah. Then waiting out. Waiting and for the boats to get loaded. Then racing the ride back over. to make sure you don't miss it. I yeah. almost missed my <laughs> one day. I said, I'm not staying out right, here. Right, right. <laughs> so it, it really was a great self-leveler. I think the the immediate needs, money or no money, it really is a leveling, leveling thing because the immediate needs were not, you know, finances or... They were basics like water. They were basics like ice. They were basic, you know, no fans. There's no electricity. There's no... And um, you guys were giving out water by the caseload. You were giving out lunches. You were giving out ice. Um, we even had the fire department drive uh, ride past us and hand us water and a bag of ice. Yeah. Did how, you give how, out how, the MREs? We gave out MREs, okay. tarps. Yeah. Um, Definitely the first two months was just focused on relief because as you said, it didn't matter any type of social economic background. The island was bare. Everyone Mm -hmm. needed ice, water, a place to charge their phone, a place to take a shower, a conversation, and just things that just weren't readily accessible. That you take for granted. Yeah. 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 Did you try the MREs? I did. And what did you I think? I tried the vegetarian one oh. one day when I was shaking because of a <laughs> low blood sugar. Are you vegetarian? Is I that am. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and what did you think? I thought it was, I mean, when you haven't eaten for yeah. 10 hours, <laughs> it's right. great. It, it was a Michelin we had them a star couple meal. Of times. We, did yeah. we, we, we liked them. We were like, <laughs> well, you guys aren't that picky. <laughs> the first day I went out to riding my bike, I only brought a bag of pretzels. And that's all I had to eat because I had my bag was so full of water and like at the batteries for the drone and the camera. Yeah, I think I was trying to push stuff on you, saying, "Max, you need this, this, this." And you're like, I'll be fine, Mom. I'm good. Yeah, that MRE was really good when I actually got one by the end of the day. Right. So explain a little bit how things have changed now. We're now nearly six months on. Yeah. Um, how 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 has it changed now? What is fish doing now? So instead of focusing on relief and you know, that what that means, it's meeting basic human needs, as we discussed, we're now transitioning into recovery. And in the recovery phase of a disaster, it's all about focusing on getting people back into their home or in some sort of stable situation. Mm. That looks very different. I will honestly say that relief was a little bit easier to tackle because everyone Needs needed the, the basics. same thing. Right. Now we're serving clients who 
some of them are back in their home and they need the social aspect of the social services and some that I still deliver cold to every week because they're using the grill we gave them at Thanksgiving to continue cooking their meals. Oh, wow. So there's such an imbalance there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so many different circumstances on, like you said, an island where you would think, okay, everyone on Sanibel's, we're going to distribute this and that'll solve this right. week's problems. Everything is so different. Yeah. Um, and so, I think even the economic... Uh, nature of supply and demand has made it difficult. I mean, some pe- everybody thinks that people on Sanibel, you know, maybe are more fortunate, which a lot of them are, but there are some people that run regular jobs and and don't have fortunes to spend on people to repair their properties. So, Or had jobs on the island that are no I longer, no longer there. in existence. Yeah, yeah all the many kind Bailey's of, workers. And, right. Yeah, people doing... Kind of like us, too. Yeah, kind of like us, yeah. <laughs> right. Kind of true. We had a photography business um, doing family portraits and weddings on the beaches, so not much of that happening right now. <laughs> yeah, there's so much of that, and I... I, I hate to say it, but it is kind of the stigma. I'll walk into any room with like this saying, you know, I'm from Sanibel Captiva. This is what we do. And at the county level or even at the state level, they go, oh, tell me more about it. They just thought Sanibel, they're, they're Sanibel Captiva, they're, they're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah it's um, not necessarily the case. But there's such a need um, and it affects everyone. The storm affected it everyone and the ability to come back home is so important so we want to make sure that we provide as many resources as we can even though those are different some of them is financial aid some of them is hopefully getting some mental health out on the island Mm. to Mm. assist that trauma yeah yeah Yeah. that's which is a real thing i mean like people i I think we are lucky that we're quite mentally strong maybe (laughs) But it's been stressful for us. And I, I know from experience there are some people that get very stressed at very small things. So I can't imagine what it's like yeah. for the people like that. I, I think before we went on air, we were talking about it's a roller coaster. And I have definitely equate to that. Most days I'm high, and then but there has been the dips. Yeah. We are like, oh. That's your problem, Laurie. You need to cut back being high. <laughs> But anyway, we've we've got walls. We've got walls now, so right. that's one good thing. We do have walls now. I'm still waiting on my week. kitchen. We got doors this weekend. We yeah. got doors. Yeah, we got a door. We didn't have it last time. Last podcast, we had a curtain over there. So right. things well, are looking I want to know how bad. you got started with fish, Maria. Take us back in time. How long have you been there? Five years ago, during another hurricane called okay. Irma. Irma. Um, that's when I started with fish. At the time, I was finishing up my studies at FGCU, and that was a shelter during Irma. And there was going to be a break about two weeks, and you know, I could decide to sleep for the much needed college student life, or I said, <laughs> No, I'm going to go back and volunteer. And I had heard of fish. So I went to the building, and I was just going to show up and see what they needed me to do. I imagined there was going to be a big need. When I got there, I saw a line wrapped around the building. And I said, okay, well, let me introduce myself, get up to the volunteer coordinator. And I said, could you use some help? She's like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Immediately, yes. And she put me to work stacking items in the food pantry. And while I was there, I could tell that someone needed help with translating for someone because mm. she was a housekeeper at one of the resorts and didn't quite understand. One of the seniors needed some help with getting items into their car. So I ended up staying the entire day and I said, I'll be back tomorrow. I stayed the entire week. Five years later. Five years later, <laughs> here, here you I are. am. Um, but it was just a wonderful fit. I love Santa Bell Captiva. I've so you grew up on uh, Fort Myers or where? I grew up in Fort Myers and I always came because my parents had jobs on the island Mm. and I always go into Bailey Fest, Luminaries, so I didn't live on the island, but I very much felt like a part of the community. Gotcha. Do your parents, or did they work on the island in recent years? They did. Okay. They're lucky that they were, you know, this much to retirement, Mm. so it didn't impact them as many, but they did lose their jobs after the storm. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, well, yeah. so then you kind of worked your way up and now executive director. I did. So I started as a volunteer five years ago and I held just about every role within the organization. Um, and I, anyone in 
social service and nonprofit knows you do it because you love the work. And for me, it's, I love doing the work and I love seeing how dedicated the volunteers are, how dedicated the community is to everybody. I mean, after the storm, there were people who literally came to me and said, I have nothing. I lost my home. I don't know how I'm going to rebuild, but this is a box of usable items. Can you give it out to someone else? And I'm like, that's wow. Santa and yes. that, And there, there was people that we met that had, uh, had given up their vacation time to come and volunteer. We met some people from Minnesota, some people from all over that were volunteering for fish during the storm yeah. rather than going on their vacations. Yeah, the one, which, the one couple said that they had had a vacation booked here before the storm, and instead of canceling, like most people did, they actually still came, came and worked. Came and worked. Can you imagine? I wow. mean, that's so nice of them. Oh, know? amazing. Yeah. Wow. And so you, you said the word volunteer, obviously so important to fish. Do you need more volunteers? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody where, out where there? Can they, where can they uh, apply to volunteer or how can they help um, the viewers help? They can call. So we have our volunteer coordinator and she is happy to get you on the schedule for once a month, five times a month, whatever you want. We will take it. But we're always looking for help. Um, the phone number to call is 239-472-4775. Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes below and Max will flash it up on the screen. So mm -hmm. reach out. They definitely need some help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So what's the future looking like? What's the plans for the, what's the next phase? Can you predict the future? Yeah, come on. I You're can't. executive director. You need to predict the future. Uh, if I could have predicted the future, I would have been making a lot more calls right before the storm saying, right. get off the island. <laughs> Take your Corvette off the island. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I saw too many of those as I was biking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yes. The, the flooded <laughs> luxury cars. Yeah. But I think for us, it's the way we predict the future is listening to people. You know, when I was out right after the storm, I listened, I tried to understand what people were going through. It's the same thing we're doing now as they're trying to get back into their home and just get as much information as we can because it's hard for a population that sometimes has never needed to ask for help to say, this is what I need, or even say, can you help me with this? Um, and just being able to figure out people's unmet needs as a community and just making sure that at the local state and national level we're being represented and advocating for the population that's out here because a lot of those unmet needs won't be filled if people aren't being vocal and being there at the table saying we need these resources out on Santa and Captiva. So besides volunteers do you need supplies? Do you take supplies from is that something that you could take or is that? We sure do. We okay. take all types of non-perishable food items and different kinds of donations. We highly encourage people to call before they donate. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that we're able to utilize the items and not just stocking on things because our building took in about six feet of water. So where it's a skeleton at the moment mm -hmm. and we, we use it primarily for food distribution as well as construction equipment um, distributions every Friday. So we just want to ask Make people sure. always. And should they call that same number that you gave out? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, because I know that you used to take, when people would vacation, any leftover foods they could bring to fish, correct? Yep. To your pantry. And obviously you've lost that supply of people that have on we've vacation. We've lost that supply. We've lost our refrigeration, our freezer. It's quite different. We're still trying to make sure everyone has food that they need. But if anyone likes to make would like to make a donation, we're always. And for those that you haven't been, it's it's located at the northern northern end of Periwinkle Way on the right hand side. What's the address, Maria? Twenty four thirty Periwinkle Way. And it was behind a restaurant that is no longer there. Yeah. Have but, you guys moved but, into that space? I think you have, right? Oh, Blue Rendezvous yeah. space. Yeah. So we even before the storm, um, we had our equipment room over at the Palm Ridge facility, so we were already maxing out a space. And right now we're currently operating among the entire building. And if you've been in it, you've seen that nothing has actually happened besides the initial. Right. You have stud walls yes. or just studs, I yes. think. And that comes from being a nonprofit and making sure that we are doing everything in our power to utilize a grant that's currently available. And we knew for a business 
that would have made no sense that they, they couldn't have possibly waited this long and i think they found a new new home for their business which i'm very happy yes about. blue rendezvous has now moved over on tarpon bay road behind the tower gallery so and they just opened uh, last week i think so. they did yes oh really yeah so everybody well, go visit in where bamboo used to be correct yeah gotcha. right so the tower so before it was like a, a, a store basically like a store set up from the back of the property is there going to be a store set up at the front where your people come to or is there that- is now actually so yeah. there is currently a makeshift pantry but if okay. you're talking about the long term and what we're going no, to that's do, what i was referring to we've the thing is we can't actually put it in the front we mm. have a loading ramp in the back and that's oh, the only gotcha. place they can actually stay <laughs> oh. and we have to figure out gotcha. all, so, all those plans lots of plans to lots future of plans <laughs> and making sure what the right fit is and it's hard to do it simultaneously while still serving the community you know besides distribution we've got our entire staff over on mcgregor doing regular case management there's still people that need to apply for Medicaid, still people who need to do food stamps. Um, people have been out of work for about six months, and some of those benefits that we were talking about from federal and state are diminishing, mm-hmm. and they still haven't found jobs. So doing wraparound is kind of all-encompassing and trying to focus on getting the building back to where it is. is so yeah. you, you have a, an office which is opposite Miners Plaza, opposite near the Planet Fitness in Fort Myers on Old McGregor. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, well, volunteer, supplies, and obviously people that still need help, reach out. Absolutely. Reach out. If you have a neighbor that you know of who's might be too afraid to reach out, let us know. It's always important. Again, asking for help is hard. We try to be very conscious of that and try to serve everybody with dignity yeah. and make sure that we are readily available. We do have a 24 hour line if you need to call if you have an inkling that you need to use the 24-hour line you probably need to use the 24-hour gotcha. line so someone will always answer yeah um, and i can definitely vouch for your compassion we've done a lot of filming over at fish and all the volunteers everybody makes everybody feel welcome whatever they need yeah i definitely can feel it yeah for sure okay. yeah people are coming for water and then left with a a red cross bag with all brooms and cleaning, sweep, buckets. cleaning supplies and buckets and they, they it definitely made a big difference so, yeah. so yeah. yeah for sure well max have you got any uh have you got max we're gonna get the we're trivia back, back to the trivia we haven't done it in a few episodes no we're so we're gonna we're gonna go back to the trivia all right, and uh paper here hand that down maria yeah all right i gave myself a piece of paper even though i'm I know the answer, so I don't know. No fair, you oh, can't play. giving me PTSD. <laughs> I was on the trivia team in high school, oh, and I were. promised myself never again. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> well, I can assure you this will be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually fish, fish, fish-centric fish questions. Oh, so. okay, oh pressure's Maria. on. So, pressure's uh, on. Let's see. Uh, okay, see and you have do. to hide your answers because Nick cheats. There we go. All right, we've got two <laughs> questions, but the first question, you know what? No, the first question is one point, but the second question is worth four. Oh. So okay. you can get up to five points in this. Oh, wow. Okay. First question In what year did Fish of Sandcap start? Can I tell you that's a trick question? <laughs> This is the this is uh, from as the usual. Website? I do surface level research, so I don't know if this is exactly accurate, but okay. this is what it says on the website. Okay. okay. And you did you she said did say how, about she it? She did say how yes. many, how long ago it was open. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right. Oh, I've got this. You got it, Nick. Oh. All right, go on. What do you have? Oh, what well, do you want me to say now? Yes. Nineteen eighty two. I went 1983. 1981. Is it 1981? It's 1981, but the the official, you know, when they put it through to the state and all their paperwork was in 1982. So we so celebrated that's me. in 1982. Uh, what did you so have? That's me. I, have it. I had 1982. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. I had 1982. <laughs> right. So that would be me. I won that. Yeah, I got that one. Thank you. We'll give you a point. Uh, by default. Oh, <laughs> was right. it, just a quick aside, was it just started by a few people, like a lot of the, the uh, charities on Santa Juan have been? Or? It was started by four couples, and oh, they okay. 
realized that Sanibel didn't have a social service agency, even though it was its own municipality. And they started the 24-hour line that's still the same line in collaboration with the police department to try to handle calls that really weren't related to them. And I think their first call was a lady saying, can you come and get this snake out of my bathroom? It was the <laughs> kitchen. One of those two. Did they? They did. <laughs> and one of the, Don't one, call me for that. <laughs> one, one of the OGs is still there, isn't she? One of the original people, is she oh, not? Oh, who's that? Involved in the organization is definitely family members from... Oh, okay. The, uh, okay. The okay. Descendants of. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, That's, got it. All right. Wow. Second Amazing. question worth four points. So this is it. This is it. So we could... <laughs> so I'm already, we could I'm already one ahead. Yeah, you are one but ahead. But we could beat you now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> What does fish stand for? Well, she said Aww. that too. Yeah. <laughs> what does fish well, stand okay. for? You get one point for each letter that you get right. And oh. also, I wrote this down differently than what Maria said it was too. So. <laughs> I it's very it quiet. It doesn't say it on the website. I it used to, I thought. I couldn't I don't find know. it. But then where did you get the answer? I looked at a picture of one of the trucks. Do you want to see my name tag? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> okay, here it is. I found it. I found it. I found it. Uh, oh, jeez. I just... Oh, is that's there what, multiple on the logo, it says it's shortened. Mm-hmm. Mm. It is. Oh, wow. Maria, you're writing a book <laughs> over there. <laughs> I have like... Three I words. did not choose the acronym. <laughs> I support it and I enjoy it now, but I did not choose it. <laughs> right. Oh, that should be a trivia. When did the acronym start? It couldn't have been from the very beginning, was it? No. no. It, its original phrase was neighbors helping neighbors. Oh, which is still on the on the logo. Mm. When did it become fish, do you know? It was in 2012. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. So it was always fish, but they actually added, added. an acronym. Gotcha. Which, then stood for friends in service here. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't, don't, no, 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 no. Hey, hey right. see, see I remember all right, back. So, should we? All right, mom, what do you have? I do have friends in service and then serving, helping. That's just and ridiculous. Food. I thought, I couldn't imagine it gets any worse than that. <laughs> Nick? Um, food, so, intravenous drips, services, and housing. <laughs> So close. <laughs> Where's that wah wah? Well, that one there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, all right. It does get worse, I guess. All right, all right Maria, Maria, tell us what it is. I have the logo. So I have, on the logo, it says food programs, island based, social services, and helping hands. But that is a shortened version of oh. the logo. Food of the- programs, island based education, social and senior services, helping hands, and financial assistance. Just rolls off. The rolls top. off the top. Yes. <laughs> That's Which not makes... much of an acronym. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. No. <laughs> no. 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 Well, anybody you want to get? I'm still wait, confused wait. as to whether I want or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. Wait. What did you? What did you get for F, Dad? Uh, food. And I had food and friends in service. <laughs> You can't help me. Can no, you it. can't just put 50 words and just <laughs> cherry pick the ones that you want. You guys got like a quarter of a point each. Okay. But obviously, but Maria dad has won. one point, so dad wins. So what I win. What about Maria? I guess Maria wins, yeah, but she's, she's kind of by default. But, I mean, okay, but I'm, I'm Maria wins, but I'm second. Correct? You're second, of course. <laughs> Yay. Maria got more right than me, who actually wrote the question. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody um, you want to give a shout out to or anything we miss, Maria, that you think we need to talk about? No, thank you for having me on. I love any opportunity to talk about what we do. Um, and even though I'm here, I always like to shout out our amazing volunteers and staff who have been working since the storm and never stopped and are continuing to do the work for the community. So. Thank you for having me. Hey. Right. Well, thanks for having, thanks for being here. It's been a pleasure. We'll be seeing you again, no doubt about it. Um, thanks for joining us on the Santa Bell Captiva Guy podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you get notified of future episodes. Thanks very much for joining us. Have a great one, guys. Bye.